Hey, thanks again for joining us this morning. We have been on a series called Living a Transformed Life. Remember, the last series was talking about transformation and how we use Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2. Um, well, yeah, 1 and 2. But uh, verse 2 says, Don't be conformed. Or one translation says, pushed into the world's mold. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might know what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. So, you know, we can know about transformation, but that transformation has to become reality. You know what the difference between being religious and the difference between your walk with God is every day your walk with God helps you be transformed. And so that's why this series came out, Living a Transformed Life. And this is the second part of that. Last week, um, I talked about how that we need to really think about the things that we say are actions and sometimes being right actually hurts other people um, you know and if you're right you're right you don't have to prove it to anybody if somebody asks your opinion tell them so we're going to go on with this living a transparent life and I'm going to talk about character how character matters and we're going to look at the life of Daniel. But first, let me read to you Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. That's Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. It says, Do not be deceived. You know, let me stop right there. Matthew chapter 24, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, his disciples said, Lord, when is the end going to come? And the first thing he said to them was, do not be deceived. Right here, Galatians. Paul is writing to the Galatians, repeating what Jesus said. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whatever, whoever sows to please their flesh, that means your, your sinful nature, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, his spiritual nature, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. How much people? All people especially to those who belong to the family of believers, or the way I like to put it, especially to those who are with you on this walk of faith. Okay? So, we're going to look at, uh, we're going to look at this transfer in life. Being a follower of Jesus should make us want to please our Father in heaven. The problem is, is that, we are still in the process of allowing God to transform us. So, there's some things in our lives that are still not pleasing to God, but He's working with us. Boy, is He patient. <laughs> sometimes we want to do things on our own, and our own way. And sometimes we find ourselves at the end of our own ways, and there He is, waiting, patiently for us to surrender to His way. God is awesome, I tell you. In this message, you will find that everyone is being processed. Everyone. Pastors, Bible college uh, professors, everyone. Theologians, that's a big word for people who study about God, you know. Uh, theology is the study of God. So theologians, all of, all of us are being transformed. None of us have arrived. 
<laughs> so we're all in the same boat. But not the same rate. We're all being processed, but not at the same rate. And that is awesome because some of us catch on things real quick. And some of us, it takes a while. Right? Sometimes it takes some of us longer. Longer. <laughs> I, yeah, you got to think about that. How patient God is. Daniel and his friends are a good example on how we are to stay in step with God even though if you know the book of Daniel you know what I'm saying even though most um, times they went through Daniel and his friends were trying times you know so here we go Daniel chapter 1 starting with verse 1 Daniel chapter 1 starting with verse 1 in the third year of the reign of of Jehoiakim, king of, of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. In other words, they surrounded it. They couldn't go out and come in. It's kind of like um, what they have today, embargoes. They, they stop things from going to countries to punish them. So that's what happened with these guys. They were being besieged. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim king of Judah, into his hands, into Nebuchadnezzar's hands, along with some of the articles from the temple. These he carried off and put in the temple of his god, a Babylonian, or in ba Babylonia, or modern day, we would know it as Babylon, and put it in the treasure house of his god. He took God's stuff that was made just for, to use in the temple, and put it in his treasury for his God. Then the king ordered Aspenaz, chief of the, his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility. Young men without any physical defect, think about these qualifications now, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of Babylon, or the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after, they, after that, they were to enter the king's service. So they had three years to learn the language and all the culture and, you know, sometimes when we go to on missions trips, we go to a foreign countries. we have to learn the culture because certain things might be offensive that we just take for granted. So that's what they did. Verse 6, among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief of officer gave them new names. Daniel, the name Belteshazzar. You try to say that fast. Belteshazzar. To Hananiah, Shadrach. And to Mishael, Meshach. And to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official to, for permission not to defile himself this way. Now, God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my lord, the king, who has assigned your food and your drink. Why should I see, why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Now listen to what Daniel says, okay? He doesn't grumble. He doesn't say, yeah, but you know, I call Jerry. He doesn't say any of that. This is what he said. Then Daniel said to the guard, whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Please test your servant for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat 
and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So, get this now. So, the guard took away the choice food from all the other guys. Took away their spam bees and their <laughs> hot dogs and hamburgers and okay. And and the wine that they drank and gave them vegetables instead. I can hear people saying, oh no, that is that is not good. Verse 17. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief officer presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked to them, and he found, now listen to this now, he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. Now, remember what verses 1 through 4 say? They were taken captive. Well, how can this happen? Didn't they love God? Yeah, they loved God. Didn't they trust God? Yes, they trust God. Sometimes we need to trust God even in the midst of the storms, in the midst of the trials. This is what builds character. Someone said, and I know that, Sunil, you probably know this, or, or one of you other wise people out there know this, and someone says, you know, talent can get you to the top, but only character will keep you there. You hear about people, they're really talented. Man, they get right up there, they start making money, and then they get into all kinds of trouble, end up in jail, or kicked out of the NFL, or NBA, or MLB, or if you don't know what those initials are, look them up. <laughs> those are all sports they're in here in America, where if you're not watching, if you're not in the United States. So it says Jerusalem uh, was, was taken over. And this is where Daniel and his friends lived. They were, they were taken captive. The temple was raided, right? They were brought into the king's service as slaves. Right? They didn't have any unions to negotiate um, salary or pension or medical. <laughs> Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael were without any physical defect. That means they took care of themselves. They were handsome. They were smart. They were well-informed and teachable. What are all these? These are except for being handsome, <laughs> you know, all these other ones is how you build character. You learn about things, right? Especially being teachable. Or as the NIV, NIV puts it, they were quick to understand. They learned the language and literature of where they were, okay? Sometimes we go into a situation we try to change it. No, learn about that. The, today, you know, Daniel Kikawa has... Uh, a book out, oh, well, he has a number of books out, but his whole point is trying to get missionaries to understand when you go into a culture, learn their culture because God has his fingerprints in that culture, and when you learn about their culture, it's easier to reach them with the gospel instead of saying, No, come be like us, or you guys don't know what you're talking, you guys are all heathens, sinners. 
Well, all of us were, right? We need Jesus. We all need Jesus. Okay? They were to eat the king's food. And it took three years. But, remember, Daniel appealed to the one who was in authority over him. And he asked, can, you, can we just do this short test 10 days? Because they were going to be there three years. And after 10 days, <laughs> I'm sure the other guys were sad because they had to eat vegetables. He said, how many of us would qualify for the king's service? Are you teachable? Are you willing to learn? Are you willing to change? Look, Daniel was willing to change, learn the culture, learn all the language, learn all of that stuff, but he didn't want to defile himself with the food. He wanted to keep the, the law, the, the Mosaic law, as far as foods were concerned. And so he didn't, he wasn't forced, they weren't forcing him to change that, but he did learn about the culture. You know, sometimes we need to learn about the culture. You know, if I go up to a, well, I walk up to a Fijian guy and I say, Kosova Katavatigo, and he looks at me, where did you learn that? Oh, okay, I learned that from my friend Manasa, okay, or from Pastor Laulu. my uh, and the response is if somebody asks me that, I go, oh, oh Manuia Fafetai. That is Samoan, right? And so you need to, and when you do that, the, the people that you talk to in their, in their culture, in their language, they're given language for their culture, you know what? It, it shows a respect for them. So Daniel and his friends were chosen. Yes, chosen by God in the midst of a very traumatic and time in history for Israel. <laughs> Sounds like what we're going through, yeah? Yeah, we live in times when our government condones ungodly stuff. Ungodly. Man, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge to our character not to just get angry and just yell at them and do all that. It's like, okay, God, how do we appeal to them? How do we stand for righteousness? And like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he's during uh, when German, Germany was trying to take over the world and all of that stuff, he stood up against the government. Of course, he was persecuted for that. Wow. Yeah, so character. We're talking about character. Sometimes we go through some things to build our character, right? And, and Daniel resolved not to defile himself. Not to defile himself. What was that defiling? To keep the law of God. To keep his, his character pure. Okay? So, Daniel said to the guard, test us. You know, are you willing to tell the culture, you know, test me, test my, my convictions. Sometimes we are we're not. You know, so, um, why, was, why was the nation of Israel in bondage anyway? Oh, let me just tell you this. You know, the quick answer is a lack of character. In 2 Chronicles chapter 36, Verses five through seven, it says that Jehoiakim, who was the was the king, he was twenty five years old, and he became the king. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. His character was was not good. You see, before anything happens, there is a reason. And let me just put it this way: our actions always have consequences. Be not deceived. Remember, I just opened up. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. What, what seed you plant, you're going to reap what you plant or what you sow. And yet, here we read about Daniel who resolved not to defile himself. He was in bondage. He was a slave. And yet, he didn't defile himself. Daniel was such an awesome example. So sometimes, some things happen around us that affect us too. Right? So, are you in the middle of something? We, unlike Daniel, have the teachings of Jesus, where Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, 
And all the things we need will be added to us. So don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear or what you're going to drink. Jesus said, people in the world who don't have hope, they worry about those things. Don't worry about that. Right? So are you worried about what life um, has for you in the future and coming? Don't worry about it. Cast all your cares on Him because He cares for you. Trust in God. You know, so we need to put the Lord Jesus first. And, and it says over here in, in Ephesians, it says that God is able to do, and Amplified puts it this way, do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, and dreams, according to His power that is working in us. Yes, even in bondage, when Daniel and them were in bondage, God is working in them to Him. To him, to who? To God. Be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations forever and ever. And everybody said, that's right. Amen. When Jesus is the Lord of your life, he is using everything to transform us. If you are struggling with a character flaw, ask God to help you. And he will. You know, Barry McGuire once sang a song. He says this, I walked a mile with pleasure, and she chattered all the way. Not a thing I learned from her when I walked with pleasure that day. He said, but I walked a mile with sorrow, and never a word said she. But oh, the things I learned from her when sorrow walked with me. You may not know who Barry McGuire is. Go on YouTube, go look. You see, we are interested in the good, and God wants us to be good. Remember, go back. Look at the Be Attitude series that we went to. So the last scripture. We do, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature. But not the wisdom of this age or this world or the rulers of this age because they are coming to nothing. But we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would never, or they would not, have crucified the Lord of glory. However, it is written, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no eye has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. So, if you have any problems with character, ask God to help you. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for me and my friends. Lord, when things are going on, people are saying, oh, what about this? Is this is this the mark of the beast? Is it not the mark of the beast? Are we in the tribulation? Are, is the tribulation coming? Did it start already? And all of this, all of these cares of the world, Lord, the enemy wants us to be confused. But we will trust in the Lord our God. You, Lord. So help us, Lord, with our character. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Okay. Hi, Mom. Brother Keone. Aloha.